typically seen in pro wrestling, this is just a painful technique. So what Tyson wants to do is he wants to prevent me from pushing his neck into his belly button. He puts the back of his hand on his head and he's trying to press my arms back and press his head back. I'm gonna hold on super tight here. He squeezes his elbows down. My fingers are hurting, hurting, hurting. He's out. Having good knowledge and technique can be the difference between making it home safely and a trip to the hospital, or worse. Looking to gain an edge in a fight? In this video, we reveal some of the most unfair and dirty fight moves that work when you need them the most. From sneaky tactics to underhanded techniques, these moves are not for the faint of heart. These dirty fighting weapons will give you the upper hand in any street fight, and that's a guarantee. Goodness, heads bouncing off the canvas with these palm strikes. Did you know that there was once a study that recorded the results of around 200 street fights and found that the average length of these fights was somewhere in the region of 45 seconds? Only 20% of these bouts went on for longer than a minute, and those fights very rarely had a clear winner. One draw and a heck of a looking ring attire and we're underway. Here we go. Oh, oh got him right out of the gate! The fastest no, no. The point is, if you can find a way to end a confrontation quickly and efficiently, you should. That's where things can get interesting, because if you stick to using the conventional tactics, you might find that your opponent is exactly the type of guy who's willing to go one step further. In those cases, you need to fight dirty, taking any opportunity that presents itself when it presents itself. So let's take a look at a series of dirty fighting tactics that could help you catch your opponent off guard. You can hear that hit his cup. It can be painful. The idea for an eye poke is to flick the hand out in a jab motion, hoping to catch the opponent's eye with your outstretched fingers. Or if you have the arms for it, you could channel your inner John Jones and simply use your outstretched hand to paw at them from range, eventually landing on their eye when they inevitably try to move forward. Opportunity to throw the right hand. Jab, 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 jab. For gouging, things get a little more grim. The idea behind gouging at your opponent's eyes is to literally thrust your fingers into their eye sockets, whether it's two of your regular fingers or your thumbs. The goal, as brutal as it sounds, is to crush their eyeballs in order to incapacitate them. My thumbs will go in his eyes, straight in, grabbing. He's in immediate pain. It's a technique you'll find prominently in Krav Maga, although if you sign up for classes, don't expect to practice this on a sparring partner in the gym, for obvious reasons. You'll train this type of move on a dummy. Slash type of uh, attack across someone's eyes. You've surely watched videos of karate chops putting people to sleep. Well, there's most certainly a sweet spot on the side of the neck that can cause your target's body to shut down on impact. <laughs> In a street fight, you could really shock and surprise your opponent if you hit them with a shot that, let's be real, no one's ever going to expect. The technique here can range from a chop to the shoulder that will catch your opponent unaware to a punch right down the middle of the throat. Now, while aiming for the throat is in fact illegal in mixed martial arts, accidental shots are not penalized. But when you start aiming specifically for the middle of the neck, things can get very, very dicey. The wrong shot to the Adam's apple can be fatal. And for this reason, strikes to the neck come with a lot more risk than most other techniques we'll list here. The aim in a self-defense situation should be to incapacitate, but to also avoid damaging your target to this extent. Use neck strikes at your own risk, but we got to admit that they're a pretty nasty technique, even when performed correctly. Once I strike, I step in with palms, elbows. We're not saying you need to have a range of spinning elbow or tomahawk attacks in your repertoire, but if you know how to manage distance and trap your opponent with one of these techniques, you very quickly. When it comes to landing with the hard bone of the upper arm or the point of the elbow, you really don't need a full connection to get your desired outcome. Coach Wink has been working on with me. The elbow is not very useful if you're fighting at range with your opponent. But like we said before, it's very, very rare that street fights will end up going on for longer than a minute or so. And if you end up with an opponent who's determined to charge straight at you without any fear, perhaps the best way to respond is by meeting him with a huge elbow. If you're athletic, sure, you can learn to spin and land one of those special John Jones spinning elbows. There. Or you can practice it like this. But in reality, you can do some real damage with any amount of a connection on your opponent's chin. 
If he continues to move in, an elbow or an elbow. You had to expect that these would make an appearance before long. The groin strike is the perfect way to incapacitate an opponent who has that special off switch in kicking range. In fact, when it comes to landing low blows, you could use this technique at a number of different ranges. Keep oh, oh that, that is allowed in this competition. A swift teep kick from distance can be enough to turn any potential situation to your advantage, just as you can always find the perfect moment to punch someone down low in the clinch. Even a slighter tap can be enough to force your target to bend over in pain. And once they do, the possibilities for your next move get far more plentiful. Going upstairs, showing some nice speed, and here we go. Chokes on the neck are right there, as are a series of shots to the knees, uppercuts, or even a good old-fashioned kick to the face. The point is simple. Groin shots are probably the most frowned upon move in fighting, especially if you get into a situation where macho bravado lays behavior is prominent. But if you land this one correctly, the fight could well be over. Just don't let them do the same to you, and you'll be fine. You can hear that hit his cup. It can be painful. Ah. But if elbows aren't quite getting the job done, there's always the knee strike. And given how powerful your legs are, this is oftentimes the shot that can do the single most damage in all of combat sports. We're not saying you need to jump into a flying knee like prime Michael Venom Page, although if you can do that, you probably should consider turning pro. But in the style of many great Muay Thai fighters, if you learn how to use the knees in the clinch, you can add weapons to your game that will shock 95% of people who try to mess with you. One, two, just there, okay. However, for this video, the exact technique we're going to focus on is the step-in knee or the intercepting knee and how it can be used to counter an overly aggressive opponent using their momentum against them. And remember, if you get into an altercation with someone and they're charging at you, by all means, aim that shot at their groin, and we see what happens when they realize they picked a fight with the wrong guy. Ah, we're getting in the groin there. And they go back to the ground. A punch to the chest or to the stomach can be sore, yeah. But if you land a clean knee to someone's groin, they're going to the hospital, and they may need to put their family planning hopes on ice for a while. Back in the glory days of Pancrase, that brought us the Shamrock Brothers and the legendary Boz Rutan, they fought bare knuckle, but with the caveat that closed fist strikes to the head were not allowed. It was basically MMA with a whole lot of body punching, takedowns, and submissions. But when the time to aim high did come, the open palm strike was the weapon of choice, and boy was it a nasty shot. The upward palm strike is the perfect way to crush your opponent's nose, and it's not just a distance strike either. If you're worried about breaking your hands to any degree, this is a shot for you. And even up close and personal, if the fighting gets a little grapply, you can always slap your opponent's ears to mess with their equilibrium. And again, best place to palm strike is underneath the jawline. You can go into the ear of the jaw. While aiming the heel of your hand at their nose in the hopes of breaking it. Because while breaking someone's nose isn't a very nice thing to do, not at all, if you can end a confrontation this way, it's almost better to do so than checking their chin and causing them to fall unconscious onto concrete or tarmac. That's quite risky. Off the canvas with these palm strikes, and honestly this the ref is actually having a pretty good look at this. The open palm strike was a favorite of Boss Rutan back in the day. And considering how successfully he managed his MMA career and his infamous street fighting stories, it's pretty safe to assume that you can trust Boss and you can trust us on this one. And finally, though we know it's not a dirty move per se, if you have the skills to catch your opponent off guard with a slick trip or a judo throw, you could really minimize the amount of damage that either of you take. Not only can it be a pretty big hit to the ego to get snapped down to the mat like you weigh about 100 pounds, but conceding that type of takedown can really mess with their confidence. And if you're throwing or tripping them over, and you're able to get yourself into a solid position of control, you can pretty much end the fight right then and there with a choke. We've dealt with a lot of dodgy techniques, low blows, eye pokes, all that business. But at the end of the day, if you can avoid a potential volatile situation by using pure grappling or even wrestling, 
you're going to put 90% of people in a world that they simply do not understand. Okay, you can go uh, take a room up. Okay. You can go take a room up. And if you get your opponent out of their comfort zone as soon as you can, your odds of avoiding catastrophe skyrocket. But remember, use these techniques responsibly and only when the need to do so is unavoidable. These can be great tools, but they also carry great risk with them. So always try to de-escalate when you can. Pressure, so I step across as if I'm doing a go sheet, and I take my opponent down with a society. You guys have any street fighting stories or close calls? Let us know in the comment section below.